Hello and we are back. It is I, Bruggy, and I'm with my very good pal and Viking, Eggle Thorson. Hi there. So, how are you today? Now this is a bit of an update video because we've not been filmed for a while, have we, Eggle? Mm, it's, been no. a, it's been oh, a good few months. Yeah. Eggle's been hibernating. <laughs> And we decided just to do a little bit of update video to let you know, guys and girls know that Eggle's okay and so mm. am I. And later on I'll explain how I fell down the stairs and caused a nice skull on my uh, eye. So, Eggle, oh, no, I was sober at the time, yeah. who are you? Who am I? Yes. There, there's a whole... For the, for the people that don't know. Right. I am a Viking reenactor. I'm 67 years old met up with this character in reenactment 22 years ago Good wasn't grief. it Something like that, yeah. <laughs> that was a young man then so was i yeah <laughs> young man <laughs> but uh, we have a mutual um, interest in history reenactment bragi likes the american civil war well, i like I, the first yeah, world well, war. i like all sorts mm. of history but that's one i did for many years reenacting yeah. and it's you know a great period to do and he's got some great kit as well. Yes, you are. Most reenactors do have yeah. a hoard of kit, don't they? Well, mine's kept down here, don't they? <laughs> well, I know. Well, it does yeah. help for filming. Yeah. But we'll get you some more kit in the future. Yeah. I'm going to solo one day. But anyway, having said that, as I say, I studied at York uh, doing archaeology and history, gaining the magnificent third. Yes, Edgar is an archaeologist. And yeah. we must emphasise that because, you know, it takes a, long, a lot of work mm. to do a degree. And, you know, archaeology is sort of a fascinating subject. So we're not just amateurs on this channel. Mm. We have a professional archaeologist. Well, you know. was. <laughs> well, it was. You're retired yeah. now. I used to, I've, I've worked at Sutton Hoo, Cromford, all over the place. But uh, I love doing it. But writing about it, wow. Forget it. But anyway, moving on. So, you know, if you have any questions about the past... I'll certainly, if I don't know at the time, I'll tell you and I'll research it and get back to you. You can always go to our TikTok where they've got a, a section where you can ask questions mm. and then we will reply with a video. And don't be shy. I mean, as far as I'm concerned and Bragi, your friends. From, family. All over, family all over the world. We go from Australia to Canada to America. I think we do. We're international. Yeah. Am I right in saying that we're actually used in China for English language? Yes, people have watched us in China and India. In fact, we are international superstar mm. Vikings. Well. <laughs> and a pair of Vikings. Well, I, love, I love that saying. They know us, but there you go. So anyway, uh, I've been on lockdown, well, so has you. Well, two you? years. I mean, yeah. I've already left the house in two years because Same of here. my situation of being a carer for my dad. And yes, uh, you know, controversially, I have not been vaccinated. Say that now, mm. end subject. You have, yeah, each yeah. to their own, you know. I'm not anti-vaccine. It's called freedom of choice. Yes. But, you know, I have purposely stayed at home because mm. of that situation, where mm. I may have gone out a bit more. The thing I find disturbing is people won't wear masks. I mean, what's the... I mean, I wear one. People think I'm odd anyway, but that's their problem. But you go into supermarkets, they've got the barriers up and ask you to wear it, but none out of ten that and it's people of my age group who seem to wear it. So you. are you seeing less people wearing masks in, yeah. in Derby then? Yeah. And the young people are pretty you know, they they're more at risk than I am. And the thing that annoys me, you see people wearing masks with the nose hanging out. Hmm. Well, it go, if it can come from China, mate, it can come up your nose, no problem. But at least with the latest variants, you're less likely to get ill, which is good, and hopefully the next few variants will be the same and, and, and less, yeah. you know, catchable. It depends on... Well, let's move on from COVID, because it is a controversial subject. Yeah. I call it the Kung Flu, because you can't really say COVID on YouTube. You, well, a couple of years ago, you couldn't, because you'll get removed. That's mm. why you just use catchphrases and the little uh, words like the kung flu to disguise the fact you're talking about something which yeah. you shouldn't have to but people had to do that yeah. so uh, we talked about you and we talk about perhaps me okay. who am i i am braggy i am also a viking reenactor mm. i've reenacted for nearly 30 years and i've done it all over the world and many years ago i was sitting down with my very good friend uh Tirk here and another old friend of mine and we'll just Tirk here yeah hi and we were just discussing about YouTube, and I kept on talking about this idea I had for a channel. 
because at the time there wasn't many channels like us. I mean, we have mm. inspired so many channels, I think, to come on a pairing kit and tell stories. In fact, we've even, you know, made English Heritage tell folk tales because they started doing what we do, where mm. they're dressing kit about a year ago and told traditional folk tales. No doubt they've probably seen what we do four years ago and thought, yeah, this is a good idea. And there's not many channels that were doing that at the, at the time. So I kept on thinking to myself, yes, there's an opportunity here to make some really nice content because there's not a lot of content out there. And this is where the whole emphasis began. It was an idea to tell every story from the sagas and every folk tale and have them recorded for, for humanity so that when I die many years from now, if it's out 50, I'll leave something behind for the world to see if we're still here. So that is why I started this channel and of course I started with Tear Care. So hello to Tear Care and thank you for all the content you've done and I got an update on Tear Care Th Thor Coulson in a little bit. So mm. hang on for that. And um, yes, so this is where we are now. It's nearly five years we've been uh, working on this channel and you've been on it, what, nearly four years? Yes, something like so, that. Yeah. It's so, back time's flown. So, you know, what are we planning to do in the future? So we're going to continue to publish our folk tales. I'm currently publishing one video a day, sometimes two or three on mm -hmm. a rare occasion. And I will continue to publish short videos because they're the way we're going to make this channel get bigger. Because that's the only, they're more likely to go viral, couldn't speak them. So, uh, so we're all going to introduce more short videos, as long as historical, but also the funny ones as well. Because people do love these funny shorts. And I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really sorry if you don't like the short videos because they are very short. But we will continue also to make longer content to tell more folk tales, more storytelling, and also more history. And also, why don't you send us ideas of what you want to Well, say. we always welcome your ideas, mm. and you can just leave it in a comment, you know. So, um, so you've been hibernating for a while then, over winter, not seen you for, oh, many months. Well, so it's I'm really not... nice to catch up again. Yeah, it's nice to come out today. I mean, uh, I'll be honest. I've just locked myself away, I only came out to buy food. Other than that, I've just sort of sat in front of the television. Well, I think it's one of the results of what we've been through, is that mm. you don't want to leave your house. I know you feel yeah. like this, don't you, mm. at times? Well, you know? I noticed that where we were talking earlier, we've got similar, I won't say problems, but similar situations. Well, in... We've got similar results from what we've been through, yeah. where... We both feel like, oh, I don't want to step out of the house. Mm. I mean, granted, I live in a wonderful big house with mm. a big garden. I've got a library and a games room, and I've got everything I possibly need in this house. I, I, I don't, haven't. I don't have to leave. <laughs> yeah. and you, but you do get in that position of comfort. Siege, I'm not wanting to go out. Siege mentality. You know. I mean, also, I notice my language in my. Flight, we'll get onto that in a second. Yeah, uh, has been quite colourful. <laughs> yes, and. But yeah, I don't think a lot of people can be blamed for not wanting to go out during mm. this situation we've been through. But, you know, pre-pandemic, I was out every week for a regular beer on a Wednesday. Mm. not done that for two years. So, it's, I, you know, so I, hopefully I'm going to get back to normal. I have been to York and I have been to uh, Peterborough. Uh, but that's my other hobby is collecting medals and researching them. But more of that later. But yes. Having said that... Uh, it's still a bit weird, isn't it, meeting people? Yes, it is a bit. And then what we were both talking about earlier, we were talking about the fact that we seem to have lost that ability to regulate our behaviour. Mm. I'm swearing like a trooper now. Mm. I don't know why. Same here. I, I never used to swear a lot. I mean, uh, oh, I did. I had a lady around here I used to work with called Anne. Hello, Anne. And she was saying that I never used to swear when I used to work mm. at the factory I worked at. But now I, I'm tending to swear all the time and mm. I can't help it. And it's like... You've lost that ability to regulate that normal mm. behaviour, which you know is not slightly acceptable. You know, what, what do you think, Eggle? Well, to be honest, I remember at the beginning of lockdown, I thought I'll be nasty Eggle in my flat when I'm on my own. Grumpy Eggle, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. But when I'm out and about, I'll be sweetness and light. And uh, you think, well, why can't you be nice all the time? Yeah. Why well, have you. Being nice. It's free mm. and it's a wonderful thing to do mm. to people. And uh, as I said in the Highway to Heaven, it, kindness costs nothing, doesn't it? Well, also, there's going to come a time when you forget and you're going to come out with a mouth of horribleness in front of somebody because that's the way it is. So 
training. It's, it's really training, I guess. Yes. Well, you know, we've all got to go through that, and I'm still mm. not in that situation where I'm going out regular. So, you know, it's it, a regular uh, mm. time. Well, uh, I've been to the shop a few times. Uh, I've taken a walk out in the evening just to stretch. Because if, if you stay in the same building all the time, you, you get yeah. that kind of like... Uh, you, yeah. So you've got to get out. That's why going to the Dolphin when I did uh, for a pagan, which I thought was a pagan fair. Which no, it's a moot. Yeah. We'll talk about that towards yeah. the end of the video. But uh, it was good to get out and get some red wine down me because I've regulated my diet where most people are saying, oh, I've put weight, I've lost weight quite a lot. I suppose this is a way that the subscribers could actually get to meet us by mm. coming to the moot. So once a month in Derby, there is what you call a moot, and a moot is basically it's M O O T. It's a it's moot. a place where pagans gather and we just socialise and talk about what we do and who we are and have a few beers and a bit of a laugh. And well, I wasn't we, laughing much myself, but having said that, well, I had a yeah. really good time last time. Yeah, well, I could imagine it's a great lovely time. people. Oh, well, yes. Now, um, let's talk about something controversial on the channel, is swearing. Woo. Now, the other day I put a poll out on the channel, because on TikTok we do swear quite a bit in our videos. Mm. Sometimes we make videos where we're, we're miming to other people's videos. Mm. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're just trying to break through on YouTube and TikTok. Now, on TikTok we've got 27,000 followers, but mm. on YouTube, what, we're nearly 3,000, mm. and we're very thankful for the 3,000 that follow. And mm. that is about 20% of our audience, says. Yeah. So there's a lot more people watch the channel. So we should we swear on the channel yeah. or should we not? It's a very weird one. I mean, some people come out of such language and then it's it on telly that they then take offence. There are professional whinges. I've well, you get these woke people and they take offence by anything. But each their own. You're yeah. more than welcome if you want to watch the content. Yeah. But... Um, so I did put a poll out and majority of people said that swearing in videos is okay. Mm. And what I think we do when we do put some of these short videos out and I've got one folk tale where there's two bits of swearing in it. One me behind the scenes swearing at a comment what Eggle made about his gentleman vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh, Iwick. <Yeah. laughs> and um, so what I think I'm going to do, when I do publish these videos and they'll mostly be in the shorts format, I'll put not safe for work in big letters on that title mm. so you guys know anybody that doesn't want to watch a video where Eggle tells you to F off you can not watch it well they, they actually, <laughs> they're gonna say that they actually do that on the television yes you know, they show things about war which is so mm. explanatory and they say scenes that may upset you well if World War Two or World War One you can pretty well believe there's gonna be some nastiness yeah to just be funny skits and they will be very funny mm. and you will laugh at them I mean I laugh at them all the mm. time I mean, you really, if you want to come round here and try editing a video, it's very yeah. difficult when you're editing a video of Eggle and he's very funny and, you have, and you're handshaking because you're laughing and mm. you're trying to edit a video. Yeah. <laughs> it can be impossible. Well, this is it. And also, people, some people get offended at anything. Well, some people do. Snowflakes, yeah. mm. as you call them. <laughs> well, that's not do, do you know I what can. a snowflake is? No. No, it's just one of those people that takes offence by anything. <laughs> I know what I call them then. <laughs> They're not allowed on the net. Oh, yes. So, that's a bit of an update. Now, mm. let's just go talk about the return of Tier Keir Thorkelson. Last year, he filmed a few of his short videos, and they're great, so thank you, mm. Tier Keir, for them. But he is going to come back. He's currently learning some more folk tales. So, I'm hoping he's going to come and stay for a couple of days at some point. And we're going to have to do a lot of mm. filming and possibly do a live stream with him. Yeah. So... That's what's been happening behind the scenes. Very knowledgeable chap. Yes, but what I want Tick here to do is more historical content. Mm. Because, like you said, he's got a vast amount of knowledge. Mm. And I think people just want him to sit down and just talk like we are. Yeah. Rather than stand and emphasise a story. You know. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see that. And I'm sure yeah. you guys would as well. I'd like to meet him again. And of course, I've also been working behind scenes with Neil Sigmundson, who's done a couple of stories on the channel. Mm. And very recently, I went out in the woods locally and I filmed uh, a few of their group for some B-roll for them and B-roll for us as a trial run. Mm. So we're going to see whether we can develop that and work with that group a bit more and get a few more Vikings on camera. 
I think that will be very good and good for them and good for us. One of the weird things is people will think, oh, you know, we'll meet everybody. and It's not like that. We film on different days. I mean, I haven't seen Nyal or uh, Taiki here in ages. Years. Yeah, years. It's not that I don't like them or anything. It's just that our paths don't cross. So if you're listening in, Taiki, hi. Same with you, Neil. Hi. Well, as you never know. Mm. So, um, any more, anything else you want to say? No, you know, that's about covered most things. I mean, oh, we did mention the, about medals. That I'm not, yes. Yeah. So one of the things I want to do with uh, Eggle, because he's got such knowledge of medals, is possibly, I think on another channel, we're going to create Eggle's own personal little channel, mm. and we'll call it Eggle's Medals Channel. Or, oh, what a... Faded we'll, we'll, glories or whatever. Well, we'll come up with some clever yeah. name. Perhaps you guys have a suggestion for a name for a channel for Eggle to talk about medals. Because I think I'd, I'd mm. like to do it on this channel, but I don't want to be too diverse. Mm. And I think that deserves a channel on its own. Well, you see, my pal who is really into them, yeah, he's self-employed, so he tends to be a lot busy at weird hours. But well, uh, I can film at weird hours. <laughs> he's in Leicester. Yeah. But, uh, Anyway. Well, that's something we're thinking about doing. Yeah. Whether we do it, I don't know. It's up to you to uh, prepare yourself and come up with some video ideas because oh, I don't know nothing yeah. about medals. Oh, well, I mean... I so can... that's down to you. Well, that's one to start with, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, like anything, you have to start with an introduction video, what the channel's Absolutely. about, and then we'll build up some content, well, perhaps. I'm quite happy to do that if you want to do that, Eggle. Well, well, I've actually got one programme in mind about a very common medal. Yeah, because medals are, are a fantastic thing, mm. you know. They are documents in the past. Yes. What people, if it's got the name, not all medals have got names and numbers, but if you have a name and a number on it, that is someone's life. I keep seeing videos on uh, TikTok where they show a man who is a Walter Mitty. Mm. Do you know what I'm going on about yeah, here? Yeah. So I'm not just playing that when it comes to medals, what a Walter yeah. Mitty is. Yeah. Walter Mitty is where you imagine, it's what I call imagineering, where you think in terms of what this person has, and of and course you never will. And of course these people will wear medals mm. which they don't own, or, or, oh. or you know, I saw a guy the other day, he had something from the Knights Templars, he mm. had, a, he had a, a World War I medal, a World War II medal, and you know, he's only in his 30s. Mm. He, he, well there's one antique program. It's wrong. There's one antique programme on and it really annoys me. It's the one thing he does that, that annoys me. I won't mention his name because I can't afford the legal bills. Yes. But whenever medals are on, he goes, oh, yes, sir. And I think, you, that is so disrespectful. You don't have that right. You know, that person's been through hell and back. ITV. Yeah. But, uh, you know. I'm sure they just do it for TV. Hmm. Yeah, I know, but it's disrespectful. Yes. You know, I, I was in the TA and I feel that, you know... And what is the TA, for those that do not know? Uh, for Territorial Army, it's, uh, if you're American, it's like the National Guard. Yes. Um, in times of trouble, you're called up. Fortunately, touch wood, I was never called up. I'm too old now anyway, but... I don't think we can really leave this video about talking about Ukraine. I was just about to so, say that, yeah. I know, it's a very serious mm. subject. Um, I, mean, I mean, you can't really imagine what, what they're going mm. through or, or know what the world's going through and what's happened in the last two months. It's like you're living in some yeah. nightmare of a dream and what the hell is Putin doing? I mean, the guy is a total nut job, you know. Well, this, I could see where he'd get a bit paranoid because of yes. borders. But having said that, you don't go in and do things like that. Special operation. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as I could say, you know, we're doing it the best way we can because the first reaction is, well, oh, send the troops and tanks and aircraft. No, next thing you know, you've got a mushroom cloud over Europe. Yes, which I don't think would ever happen no, for various not. reasons. I hope not. Um, but it makes you think, you know, suddenly you see a flash in the sky and that's it, you're going to be vaporised and dust. One of the amusing things about this is, if there is, is the local antique shop yes. the bloke who runs it is a dead spit of Putin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could get a, a job. Yeah, if I was him, I'd grow a beard. Oh, we could hide him on the channel and I'd chase him around the garden. Oh, I don't think you'd play that game. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, and you've got to give it to the Ukrainian people. I mean, Slava Ukraini. Yeah. I mean, they have sorts of spirit, don't yeah. they? And, and I've seen a lot of videos of combat that's been going on and 
thankfully we've been supporting them for a good while. Mm. I mean, it's definitely not played into Putin's hands, has it? No, and it's he's lost. Backfired. So, he's lost so many men. Well, thousands and thousands. Mm. There's also the people who suddenly realise what's going on. I mean, to be fair to the Russian people, you believe what you're told. I mean, we're told stuff. So that's, yeah, you can question it, but the same thing is you tend to believe your government. Well, of course you, know, you do. But these people, you know, and if they just say, oh, it's just Western capitalism. But, you know, do you dare get the news from the BBC when they're such a terrible corporation these days? Well, I mean, British bullshit corporation, I call them, part of my language. Well, they're, they're, they're actually, not good. No, they've cut off uh, contact with the Western world. And if you notice, when you watch... BBC News, it's just the same stories repeated after, time after another. Yeah. In fact, I've recently started watching Talk TV, which I find a little bit more refreshing, and Great Britain News. Mm. But even though you don't know what you're being told is true, you know, we live in that uh, age when you don't know what's true, do you? Well, the BBC are very biased anyway. I mean, mm. biased corporation, that's mm. as you said. But uh, I suppose everyone's got a bias. Uh, well, of course so. Yeah, but, it's... but where do we go from ha here on and how do we fix it? How do we mm. make this situation better and how do we make the world better? Because it's all right talking about the problems. Mm. I want to talk about the solutions because without solutions, we're not going to move on. Well, I think the Russian people uh, regarding Putin, well, not so much the people, but the people next to him who are losing money. The, yes. You know, and... That's where it's going to start. No, where, where it's going to start, it's going to start with American funding. Yeah. And American funding, which is happening right now, I can tell you, will be mm. funding a coup. And this takes a lot of time to happen. It's going to take months and months oh, and yeah. months. It's not going to happen. But no, this no. is what they're working on behind the side. I can guarantee you this. Mm. This is the only way you're going to solve the, the Russian situation is by getting rid of that corrupt leadership. Mm. And we need, we've got to get Navalny out of prison and put him in power because yeah. I think that's the only way... The Russian people have got a chance of a good future. And I'm, yeah. I feel so sorry for the Russian people. Yeah. I, I say that they're, they're being, you know, blinded by, you know, because we, we don't see it from their point of view. And it's yeah. easy for us to say it from a Western point of view. And we don't see it from a Russian point of view. And it's sort of, yeah. you know, complicated, uh, a complicated geopolitical mine. picture. I see a friend of mine, she's Polish and she's nervous, obviously. Well, of course so. You know, uh... My friend of mine, five months back, moved to uh, Hungary. And now he's getting a little bit yeah. nervous. I mean, he bought a lovely house, dirt cheap, loads of land, lovely country, lovely community and good social life. But, you know, he, he's, what, 100 miles from the Ukraine border? I, I would be nervous, would you? Yeah, I'd be very nervous. And, and it's not far from our doorstep. Yeah. I mean, distances don't mean anything at the moment. I mean, it's when he starts talking nonsense about nuclear yeah when he mentions the n-word mm. the nuclear word which you're not meant to do you know mm. it's 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 so dangerous as well but uh well it's indiscriminate but, isn't it you know that they, they'll lose equally much as the rest would lose mm. if, if he does fire a nuke and you know you may try it but we, we don't know we can't predict the future we're not no. seers are we no I we don't, don't have that ability i think it highly unlikely but yes i agree mm. I, I think so, it's very very highly unlikely so I hope we're not brought this video mm. down by talking about Ukraine. It is a very serious situation. We'd like to hear from you. What do you think? Yeah. And we wish everybody in, in the world peace, peace. and happiness. Yeah. Because if we can have that, we can all move on and make this world a wonderful, better place. Well, and I we mean, can have a new age. Whilst we're thinking about war, we're not thinking about the environment. No. You know, we're not thinking about the economic crisis no. going on in the world. What's happened to the world debt crisis? Oh, we're getting a kick up the bottom now yes. because of covid because of the russian thing and uh, what about you are, are you better off in your financial situation now yeah. than you was a couple of years ago with I retiring am, i am a lot better off but i can appreciate that there are people who are see i've tailored my life to living on the dole yes so i kept it as it is in fact i've cut back on food because I've lost about three stone or more. And, yeah, I'm better off. I pay uh, my electric through a card, so I use what I need and no more. But well, if you've yeah. got a family and you've got... Oh, a mortgage and you've got yeah. to pay for your heating. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm not in an eggle situation, yeah. which I'll explain in a minute to a degree. But 
you know, so okay. are you able to go out now and have a nice glass of wine and a yeah. meal when you want one? Yeah. Whereas before, a couple of years ago, you couldn't even afford that. I'd never bother with heating. I was brought up without yes. heating. Well, heating's and, on always in this house. And uh, as my dad, my dad, my dad used to say, if you're cold, put a pullover Too on. Too right. And, you know, it's just something I don't feel like cold as much. Uh, I remember I felt like going, I went to um, the, uh, Pierre Victoire. Yes. And that was really nice. I had a steak, chips, oh, yes. wine, ice cream, oh, yes. coffee, mm. 15 quid. Nice. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a bit a bit tight this month because I've ordered new glasses, but uh, well. Well, I'm glad you're in a better situation mm. because you know I've known you for 22 years, and I don't like saying this, but you've always been poor, hard up, hard up is <laughs> yeah. another way of saying it. Yeah. I, I don't come for that situation. You know, I, I could basically retire now at mm. my age in my 40s and never have to work again, which is why I do this on YouTube mm. because I'm not one of these people that can sit around and not do anything. I have to mm. do something. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's born in various ways, and, you know, I don't really grudge you that. And perhaps this is yeah. our mission from yeah. the gods to do this. Yeah. I often think that. Is this our mission from the gods to appear on YouTube and raid YouTube with good well, content? The thing I like about it, yeah, this isn't buddy-buddy. The thing is, yes, you are well to do, but you don't rub it in people's faces. No, there's nothing worse than when you meet somebody and they overemphasize having too much money, you could yeah. say. I mean, I appreciate what I've got. I mean, I mean I'm very lucky in my life. As far as I'm concerned, if you, I've get, been a million, poor. If you get a million pounds a day, fine, go for it. I mean, I have an older brother who's extremely rich, but yeah, he won't even bother to send my dad a birthday card or Christmas card, yeah. and that's disgusting. Yeah. But uh, family's for you. <laughs> we don't go to do families. Yes, no more said but on that. I've been trying to bring them together, but no. Never but, mind. You know, but if you can choose some good friends in life and have mm. some good family, then that's great. And mm. at the end of the day, you know, you are our family, you mm. are our brothers, and you are our sisters, our yeah. northern, our Norse brothers and sisters. Mm. But we also welcome anybody on this world, whether you're Christian or Buddhist or you're a non believer, or, you're all welcome. And also, people's sexual orientation. Yes. It d doesn't give a shit for me, as far as I'm concerned. You don't judge a person by their sexuality, you judge them by what they do. Well, things have changed because we no longer live to marry and have children. We now live to meet somebody and fall in love and find happiness. I think that's changed, hasn't it? Yeah, it's not changed for me. Nobody wants to know me. Woof, woof, Eggle's still single. Folk. Any nice ladies out there in the early 50s, Eggle's single from Derby. Are you from Derby? Are you single? Do you like men with long hair? Men that smoke a pipe. Do you like mm. um, an adventurous sort of character? A pain in the arse. Would you like to go out with a man who's very funny? Eggle was mm. very funny. Mm. Oh, yes, this has turned into an advert for you, Eggle. <laughs> well, I'm still friends with my ex-girlfriend. Yes, I. Uh, I don't believe in holding grudges. No. She, she's a wonderful woman, and we're great pals. Although there are times I could strangle her. <laughs> but uh, she could feel so. You probably feel the same about me. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's just the way of it, but uh, I don't believe in making enemies. The Irish have a great saying, the world hasn't got any strangers, they're merely people, friends I've not yet met. Yes. And I believe that. That's a very old saying and mm. a true saying. Very, very... Uh, and a fine saying is fascinating mm. where they come from. Well, the Irish are a very deep uh, nation. Yes. Yeah. And we can't really talk about Arden without saying hello to uh, Martin Brown, the Belfast Viking. Hi, Martin. So hello Martin, hope you've been keeping safe and uh, well. It's a beautiful country, I mean I remember I did a show over in uh, Southern Ireland. We'll go over and visit them one day and drink mead. Went to Clos McNoise. Yes. Beautiful, and it's uh, the people are <laughs> manana, I loved it. And a tip for you, if you go to Ireland, don't harass them. It takes as long as it takes. And uh, they know a million ways of winding you up. Oh, yes. Well, they always love me in Ireland yeah. because I'm a good singer. So, Also, the trout is delicious. I remember when they, I was in a, in a bar. We were doing a, a civil war battle. Mm. And there were some local Irish singers. And I asked any of our guys can sing. Well, everybody pushed me forward because yeah. I'm the only one that knows all the songs and can sing yeah. on a loud voice. And so I started singing and the locals loved it. And by the time I finished singing, my whole table was full of mm. beers because people kept buying me beers. Yeah. 
and I got slaughtered that night and I woke up and, and the next day I was half in the sea and half on the beach like this, <laughs> you know, passed out. It was brilliant. Well, good times. One thing I remember, they did so lovely and that's, a, they got a, they don't do chips and they did a big ball of mashed potatoes. Yes. And deep fried it. Yes, I never yeah. tried that. Ah, oh, it's, that's your, the it's Emerald a wonderful Island. thing. Huh? It's a wonderful thing. Ah, uh, we have a cup of tea, Father. Uh, Drink. <laughs> Ah, uh, Father Ted. Yeah. Yes. It's a shame he died. Well, they're both dead. He's dead and so's Father Crilly. Yes, it's a shame, really. Mm. It's such a great series. And if you have never watched Father Ted, I do urge you to go on uh, Channel 4, if you can get the app or YouTube, and watch some of the highlights. It's Ireland is great. a wonderful it place is. to go. Because I remember we were doing the Viking thing and Kim was there saying... Well, I was dead, but wasn't at that one. Well, he was saying, uh, oh, you're drunk. And he said, oh, no, sir. I'm just a nymphomaniac <laughs> for my beer. And that's how they see it. It's, and they had a wonderful clan system. Yes. There's one person elected the head, and there's about three or four families, and they pool everything, and they make a decision on buying stuff. It's, it was very odd, but uh, it now, seemed to work. Yeah, another update we're not really mentioned is that we've got a new camera. Ah. I, just, I had to go and spend a bit of money. I had, I had some spare cash. And I need to upgrade. We currently film on a G7 uh, Panasonic Lumix, which goes over Eggle's head, yeah. and a G100. But I've always wanted to get onto the S series. I would have liked the S1, but the S1 is such a big and bulky camera. And I recently saw that they released the S5, which is one of the key hot cameras at the moment to film on. So yes, this is actually being shot with a Panasonic Lumix S5 with uh, I think it's a 12 to 60 mil lens, if I can't remember the lens yet. It's not a brilliant lens, I don't think, but uh, I've got better lenses. This is where he really gets off on it. Yes, oh yeah, well I, I, I like photography, it's my favourite and best subject at school. Well you sort of got it off your dad as well. Oh yes, of course, yes, uh, my dad was a keen camera collector. Kissed by the gods. So. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yes. Don't worry about it. I remember your dad actually, when I worked at the museum, coming in and explaining and to me about the yes, engine. Yes, what museum is that? That would be the Museum of Making, it's yes. called now. It was called the Industrial Museum when I was there. At some point we'll try and do a video there and, and film it, because I think it will be interesting, and because we're like probably the, some of the biggest historical YouTubers from Derby, there's not many people from Derby. Yet. I am related to a very famous YouTuber called Sumpy, that's S-U-N-P-I, and she has 113... Um, thousand subscribers and she's a little bit watching the videos i mean uh, this is definitely why we need to get a lady host on the channel and i would you know i think that would be great it's one that we always wanted to have a woman on the channel as a host i mean i know a very good one but she lives in liverpool i know it's always miles away and they're never from derby which is a shame well, but I, uh, I tend to make friends um away from Derby. But I was in the um, the Derbyshire Pagans Facebook group and Ooh. I saw a, a Madeleine, I think her name is, and, she, and she's from Derby and she's Ooh. a 12th and 13th century reenactor. So it's good to see that there's other reenactors in the area. Well, I'd like to say thanks to uh, Bragi. It's yes, it's been nice to have a few uh, months yeah. off and putting videos out because I, we have had some months off. Yeah. But well, since, since, well no, I'm not really published over yeah. winter too much and early spring but at the beginning of april mm. after i've had my accident i started to uh, publish again daily well, i mean i've got I a say, lot of videos to publish this guy's brought me out of his seclusion dusted me yes off, and that's so that's it now we're filming for summer yeah. um, i can't wait for winter can you yeah. well it's i don't know birth. why it's my birthday and christmas well, same here december six weeks out no, i'm not telling you how you can guess how old i am i'm so, 67 some of you, you know yeah. i'm trying to keep it secret yeah don't don't be fooled by my Peter Pan looks. After all, you are the eye candy of the channel. Hey, what can I tell you? Woof, woof, baby. baby. <laughs> but it's funny how you never say meow, meow, baby, because it's not quite the same. Now, the weird thing is, when I'm in bed, and this is clean, oh, right, yeah. I relax. And what do you I'm, wear in bed? Nothing. Right, <laughs> that's um, not clean. I'm in bed, and then when I'm relaxed, I go, meow. Yes. I, I, I don't know why I do it, oh. but it is something I do, because I love cats. Not allowed a cat because I know the residents would crucify me, but I love cats and I love dogs. I'm a more cat person. But um, I was going to say something then. You know when you got something in your mind, you yeah. forget. But um, 
what are they going to say about cats? Yes. Yes, cats are wonderful creatures. Well, you had one, didn't you? Yeah, I had cats many years ago. Yeah. I can't remember what it was Charlie. Called. Charlie. Oh, Monty. Yeah. Monty, that's Titchy. the one. I remember Monty the long time. Tiger. Day. Yeah. I think when I first used to come around here, he had two, but Monty was the last one. Yeah, so I was just going to go back to about sleeping, because I do have bad insomnia. I mean, some mm. days I don't go to bed for like a whole day, and I'll stay awake for 30, 40 hours. It's the only way I can get myself back into, you know, a sleep pattern. Uh, but because I started doing that, I'm just used to staying awake. Mm. And it's funny, you know, I go for a whole day, wake up at 10 or 9 o'clock, I go for the whole night, I'm not tired. Mm. I'm not tired at night either. It's, I like, I've got, I got too much energy at times. But I think you're very mm. right, in, because I, I, I read, I've been reading about sleep patterns and sleeping. It's very true. If you wear less clothes in bed, mm. you're more likely to sleep better. I just feel better. And if you have a bath or, or a hot shower before you go yeah. to bed, that will also make you sleep better. Because what happens, especially in a hot bath, mm. when you get out of your bath, your body core temperature vastly drops suddenly, mm. which makes you tired. And then the third tip for sleeping better is to have a window open and have a cool room. With those three mm. things, you'll sleep better. Maggie's advice. I remember when I used to go on exercise with the TA. Sometimes you wouldn't sleep for 48 hours and you'd hallucinate. I remember I was in a slip trench yes. in Thetford. What, what is a slip trench? It's a thing where soldiers... It's not something you slip in then? No. But anyway, I saw a bush get up a, a bush a bush ah. get up and run across <laughs> and then i called the guard out because i swore blind that there were two insurgents enemy yes coming along and they were creeping in and it turned out there were swans oh because <laughs> it was a real they got a great big lake there yes and i remember we had an half an hour of, do i sleep or do i eat and i fell asleep with a sandwich with a bite out of it but it's true what you say, you have highs and lows, because on the back of the wagon, it was, yeah, look what you've, what we've done, what are you doing this weekend? And, yeah, but then I slept like a log when I got into bed. Um... Now, there's something I forgot to mention, which is we have a new host. Ah. Now, one of our long-time subscribers and one of my best friends, equally as best friend as you and Tirk here, mm. and, it, it, and I'm, I can't emphasise how valuable his friendship has been to me over the last four years. I mean, we talk every day, and this is my very good friend, Irik. And Irik is a, he's, a, he's, a, he's new to biking reenacting. Mm. He's been doing it for a few years, and he's, he's, a, he's agreed to join the channel and make a few videos for us from that point of view as a new reenactor. And we tend to cover, me and Irik, and make mm. some videos together. He's in London, yeah. I'm in oh, Derby. That's a good he's, he's having to yeah. record it in some videos himself, but we worked it out. And he's a lot younger than us, so he's mm. going to bring in some more of the ladies to the channel because he's got, you know, he's a good looking young man. We've got a girlfriend though. So I just want to welcome Irik to the channel. He'll be doing a few videos. None's been published so far, but I've got a few to work on, and you'll be seeing him in the future too. So, hello to Irik, the man of many axes, as I called him. Oh, yeah. And uh, yes, welcome to the team. I mean, fundamentally, we do welcome anybody to come on the channel, channel as, a, as, a, as a guest. So I can't speak, I'm tired today. <laughs> I speak too fast. <laughs> but it's something I found out, you know. I've been doing some research and I think I've got something called Einstein syndrome. Because Einstein did not speak to us very late, five or six. Now, I, I did not speak to us about four and a half, five. Uh, I, I... Be honest, I think I know what you've got, and it's and, it, and it's well, no, it's, it's mm. what you what I've got isn't what you think. Einstein syndrome is basically, uh, you know, you, you're extremely clever mm. Uh, mm. and you're a problem solver, which I am, but I, I've been looking into it, and it, but it's very difficult in the mm. UK to get diagnosed with Einstein syndrome. Mm. But basically, I'm a genius. <laughs> well, I do notice that sometimes you mispronounce words, well, that's my speech, yeah, and that's just I, I had a speech problem, yeah. Uh, you know, exactly. equally as much as uh, yeah. late development. It happens. Because yeah. I speak too fast. That's one of the signs of an Einstein syndrome, the, the very fast thinkers and talkers. Mm. It's like a log jam in your brain. Oh, yeah, it's so yeah. much information, which is why I can't sleep at night, because my brain is just filled with stuff. Mm. And especially when I'm editing on the channel or working on it, it's very difficult to turn off. It's very odd, the things that stop you sleeping. Yes. It can be the most true. You know what? I once 
stayed awake 24 hours because I couldn't sleep. You know why? Yeah. Is knowledge infinite or finite? And that infinite. Yeah, but is it? No, but the universe is infinite, and yeah. therefore so but is knowledge. Even so, that still has a boundary somewhere. It may be millions and millions and millions of miles away. Yes, but you're not calculating for the multiverse. Yeah. So yeah, don't get me started because I'll be brutal. We do live on in a that. multiverse. Don't let NASA yeah. tell you wrong. We do live in a multiverse, and yes, we are a binary star system, as is most probably true. But NASA will not tell you that, and I wish they did. I'm in the trail of Mars at the moment. Right. He's zipped off. <laughs> yes, I think there's been a massive uh, earthquake on Mars recently, or one of the planets, maybe Neptune, I can't remember. It's, it's a channel I watch daily called uh, Suspicious Observer. It's like an update on the sun. Yeah. Fascinating channel. My late uncle actually built his own telescope. Did he? Yeah. Wow. That's not an easy thing to do. He was uh, amazing. Well, he didn't like me, but um, he actually built a television set. What? Yeah, he was in the Remy during the war. Yes, what's, what's that then, the Remy? Royal, Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineers. Yes. And he invented a rat trap in Italy, and that was an accumulator, which is a big battery, and you'd hang margarine from a string, and the rats would put their paws on the terminals, completed the circuit, and electrocute them. Oh, wow. Because rats were a major problem in Italy. And then, as I say, later on he built a television set. <laughs> And I can remember him building um, a telescope. It sounds like my brother David. There's my brother David. Hi, David. Not seen him for oh, yeah. not since he got married. So hello to uh, David and his partner. Mm. Uh, but my brother David, he makes Tesla coils. Mm. And those are those massive machines that yeah. spark out electric. And he does that in his spare time. Mm. He's a genius when it comes to electronics. A very clever man. Yeah. And uh, I do miss my brother David. It's a weird thing because my late uncle John was my godfather godfather his best friend of my dad but he didn't like me for some reason yeah this uh, video is carrying on mm. now another thing i want to get back on the channel to is doing some of the kind of content we filmed three years ago which is the raw content where we read your comments yeah. we're going to uh, film more uh, trailer reviews reviews of films and programs we like and stuff like that Simple long video for 20 minutes or roundabout mm. where I'm not going to overemphasize on the editing I'm just going to keep it quite simple um, Maybe include a bit of b-roll because one of the problems with YouTube is that not a lot of people would At this point be watching this video because a lot of people will lose interest mm. Just watching the same scene or the same person which is why b-roll footage is such an important thing And I have been filming b-roll in my spare time and Building up a massive library. Is that of, what we're we'll doing this afternoon? Yes. Well, let me explain to you. You, you don't know what B-roll is, do you? So when you see a video or a program on on the telly, and you've got a presenter, and you're talking about something, but then they go to another video, and you hear the voice talking, but they're showing you a scene or let's say a battle. Yeah. That is B-roll footage. It's ah. supplementary footage to help to tell the tale. Now today's video. I'll publish today, which not today, it will be in the past because this will be published in the future. Is the folk tale of Dave the Cat and the Dragon of Draco. Excellent telling mm. by Eggle, and one of the very few limited stories which, yes, we've actually made up ourselves. Mm. And this is a part of our Dave the Cat series. Yeah, it's what we do. It's... Yeah, and, it's a, and, and so in that video, I put a lot of B roll, so you're not watching Eggle for 15 minutes, you're getting other footage. And I've actually found a very good channel on YouTube that's got all of this content in Creative Commons, it's a Viking channel. So I'm borrowing some of his videos. It's quite legal to do that under Creative Commons license. Just to put that in the videos. And so that when I need a video of a man holding a sea axe, I've got that video. Yeah. When I want a video of a man chopping a log, I've got that video. Yeah. So I must admit, it you know, does look like Elstree Studios in here, doesn't right, it? Right, so it's a change in a wargaming room. Another thing we talked about, because I partly changed this room into my... I've got a wargame table just over there. Is that if you do a little bit of research on the battles, so mm. you're prepared to talk about it, I'll get the figures out and we could basically demonstrate those battles and talk about it with a, a battlefield scene on the war game table. Viking battles will be a bit Yes, difficult. well, I've got Viking armies. However, mm. if you've got First World War figures... Yes, I do have First World War figures. There you go. Yes. We can describe the song. And you could have a yeah, well, graphics you, for the map. It's a bit more complicated because we don't really have the um, kind of a, yeah. the uh, the mattings or the the the, the uh, tabletop to emphasise World War One. 
So we'll stick to Vikings for now, but that's maybe mm. something we could do on your, your other channel if we do start that. That's it, in conjunction with the medals. Right. Yeah, so I've got quite a few channels on the go. I'm working on a new gaming channel with a very good friend of mine called Wolfie. And he is a fantastic builder in Minecraft. And I'm also what I'm also doing is I've created another channel. Oh. I've got an old gaming channel, right? Yes. Mm. This is how I started on YouTube. So I'm taking the audio from our videos and I'm putting them to Minecraft videos. Mm. And you'll find the channel is called The Jesus of MC. Now, it's a fairly comical name, yes. And, you know, so they will be appearing on that channel. Uh, I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is mirroring the the video and putting gaming video mm. content to it and I think I might also use the game Skyrim as well for that so it's I'm, I've got so many things on the go at the moment Eggle it's mm. it's unbelievable unbelievable oh, yes so I think we'll come to the end of this video because you've got to go home haven't you yeah I would like to be there yes eventually. you want to get the bus so yeah. um if you want to support the channel then please share our videos that's the most important and best way you can help our channel i'm rubbish at sharing i admit it i'm open to admitting mm. that i'm rubbish at sharing can i just say chicken and cheese chicken and cheese get the food out of the fridge yeah for you. i see that's yes. it yes so if you can share the videos on facebook and any of the sites you can think of the more you can share with your friends the more we'll grow and leave a comment yeah. that's all we ask goodbye bye